twenties, and certainly, you know what I mean. Some granny telling me that uh, you know what I mean. Uh, I, I I didn't get her message at that time because I didn't know her, but her message I understand a lot now, all these years later. You either got Danny Malou or you didn't, and if you got it, you got Mrs. Allen, and you got what she was all about, and then um, and then it made sense to stay and to be there and to work your way around the kitchen because it's not like kitchens are now. I mean, the lamb came in in, you know, it was a, it was a lamb and beef came in and, you know, full, full star lines and ribs. It was a proper apprenticeship and you were learning real skills and you were really learning how to be a cook rather than, than maybe how to expedite food. The atmosphere was great. Again, it was that learning attitude. There was no blaring music or anything. It was just a steady atmosphere full of knowledge. I listened to every word she said. I was like a sponge and I soaked up everything she told me and did exactly what she said because I knew that she was different, that she had a different kind of palette. And it was all, she's such a modest woman and there was never any fuss about anything, but she always got right to the kernel of things. In the last now 22 years that I've known her, um, Mrs. Allen has always, when she always did, she'd always test food before it went out, before it was going to serve, tasting all the soups, tasting everything, apart from two dishes, and they were Mr. Allen's, the Valley Cotton fish soup and Ivan Allen's dressed crab. And he would come down to the kitchen from his little table, he had a table in the kitchen, up by the order board in the kitchen. Um, he sadly died in 98, but uh, before then he would come down to the kitchen and taste if you were on valley cotton fish soup that night, if that was your thing, I always kind of think, oh, I need to call Mr. Allen now and, and ask him to come down and taste it. He would taste it. And um, Mrs. Allen Myrtle would say, well, what do you think, Ivan? Mm, I, th I think so too. I think it needs a bit more seasoning. I think it needs that. And, um, but even, even now, in her late 80s, she's still the same. I mean, I remember as a, I mean, I remember as a young chef, I was earning whatever very very little money at the time, but I would go down about once a month and I would spend my week's wages having dinner in Ballymaloo. And there was always something that she was doing that would absolutely blow me away and I'd come back saying, the next time I can afford to, I'll be down having dinner there as well. We all have the same goals that we want to uh, produce beautiful food, you know, use local and, and, and fresh Irish ingredients. And you know, she was the forefront of it for all of us in cooking. We looked up to her and she still is to this day. What she's achieved in Ballymaloo is absolutely sensational.